Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are getting started with Openbox on Arch Linux. This video is going to cover the basic installation with a few tools, so let's get going. So let's get started. Let's put up the machine and log in with our username and the password. There you go. First thing, let's refresh our servers. Let's type in sudo pacman dash syy and hit enter. Enter the sudo password. And there you go. Let's clean up the terminal and install the packages we need. So let's type in sudo pacman dash s. In my case, I'm going to install the whole XOR group because there are several programs I need in there because I'm on a virtual machine. If you're installing this on a PC, you probably need only XOR dash server. But if you need more packages, you can install them one by one or just install the whole group. It's probably easier. Then we need to install eventually a display manager like LightDM or STDM. I'm not going to do this. For this video, I'm going to install Xenit. So to do this, I'm going to type in xorg xenit And remember, if you install the display manager, you need to enable it once the package is installed. And then I'm going to install Openbox. And two fonts recommended by the Arch Wiki. One is ttf deja vu. And the other one is ttf liberation. And then let's install also a browser, in my case, Firefox. And also a terminal. In my case, I'm going to select actually two Xterm because it's overall in open box. And another terminal, it's xfce4 terminal. And I'm going to select also two packages for the configuration one is opconf, and the other one is lx appearance dash obconf and also a package for our open box menu it's menu maker and we don't have any panel available in open box at the beginning so let's install one in this case i'm going to install tint 2 because it's very simple and very customizable later eventually in other videos i'm going to probably install polybar but for now i'm just going to install tint 2 and then hit enter accept the defaults and proceed with the installation so it's going to take a second here to download and install there you go. Let's clean up the terminal. And the first thing is we need to copy the x and iter c in the etsy directory into our home directory. So let's do this by typing in cp slash etsy slash x11 slash x init slash x init rc. And we'll copy this. The file is dot x init rc. And hit enter. Now let's edit this file by typing in vim dot x init rc and hit enter. Let's go down to the end of the file and we delete these lines. And we create a new command here. We'll type in exec openbox dash session. And I'm going to use the session version because it allows me to auto start applications. And then I'm going to save the file and quit BIM and clean up the terminal. Now we installed openbox, which installed some files into the Etsy directory, which we need to copy into our home directory. But before we need to create the openbox directory. And so we'll type in mkdir.config slash openbox and hit enter. Now we can copy those files by typing in cp a and then slash etsy slash xtg slash openbox and then adopt or so everything inside here is going to be copied under the dot config slash openbox any enter and now we can start openbox by typing in start x any enter so there's not much to see we have a gray background and a mouse so if we right click here, we have a menu that means Openbox is up and running. So let's go down to the terminals and open up XFC terminal. And I want to change my keyboard layout because I know Openbox boots up with a US keyboard. So I'm going to type in set XKB map CH. This is the connotation of my keyboard and hit enter. And now my keyboard is working fine. Next is to change the display resolution. So I'll type in X render dash dash output. The display name is virtual dash one and dash dash mode 1920 per 1080 any enter now i need to put these two commands in auto start otherwise i'd have to type them in every time i boot up open box so let's open auto start by typing in vim dot config slash open box slash auto start any enter and we can see here how the command are structured. So for example, if you want to install XFC config tools, you would type in this command followed by an ampersand. So let's follow the same path. Let's go down here and I create a new comment and type in here keyboard layout. And the command is set XKB map and then CH and the ampersand. 
And in the next line, I'm going to enter a comment here again and type in display resolution. And the command is x render dash dash output virtual dash one dash dash mode 1920 per 1080. And the ampersand, and then we can save the file and quit Vim. Now let's right click and go to log out and see if it works. And I'll type in again start x and hit enter. And now the resolution looks fine. Let's open up the terminal and see the keyboard. The keyboard is also fine. Now let's begin by customizing basic things like, for example, the panel, which is not appearing yet. We installed it in two. So let's type in here tint two. And we have it down there, but we need to put this also in auto start. So let's hit control C, clean up the terminal and pull up the last two commands and enter insert mode and type in here the comment and I'll put in here tint to panel. And the command is tint to and then the ampersound. Then again, hit save and quit. Now let's exit one more time and type again start X and hit enter. And now we have our panel there. Let's continue. Let's open up again the terminal. And let's take care of also our background. We can install backgrounds here using different tools. We have Nitrogen, for example, which has a visual interface. And we could also use, for example, Fe on the command line. I used Fe for the i3 configuration. And in this configuration, I'm going to use Nitrogen. So let's install it by typing in sudo pacman-s nitrogen. And while I'm at it, I'm going to install also some wallpapers. So I'm going to type in arch linux dash wallpaper and hit enter. Enter our sudo password and proceed with the installation. It's going to take a second to do that. There you go. So we can type in now nitrogen and hit enter. And what we need to do here, we need to go to preferences and add a directory where the wallpapers are and go to the file system root. The wallpapers are always under the user share backgrounds directory and here is the folder so we can click it and click select confirm by clicking ok and here are our wallpapers so let's select one for example let's say we want to have this one right here and for the scaling i'm going to go to zoom fill and click apply there you go so we can close this up now we need to put also nitrogen in auto start otherwise it won't boot up when we start open box so let's type in vim dot config slash open box slash auto start and hit enter enter insert mode here and the comment is wallpaper nitrogen and the command is nitrogen dash dash restore and we can save the file and exit vim we can exit again our system one more time to see if everything works fine start x and everything is there, so everything looks good. Let's go ahead and proceed for the next step. Let's pull up another terminal. And let's take care of our menu here when we right click on the desktop. There are many hard coded things here we don't need. So we can reshape this by typing in mmaker. This is the menu maker we installed before. Dash VF and then open box three and hit enter. There you go. Now, if we right click again and go to system and then reconfigure open box, now, when we right click again, we have our updated menu. So we have under shells, for example, only terminals we have in the system and also other programs. So this is done. Let's go ahead and install some teams. So let's do this by typing in sudo pacman dash s. I'm going to install arc dash gtk dash theme and also the papyrus dash icon dash theme and hit enter. Enter the sudo passwords and proceed with the installation. It's going to take a second to do that. There you go. Now let's right click here, go to system settings. And first let's go to customize look and feel. And here we can customize our GTK theme. So let's go to arc dark, for example, I like that and click apply. We should have also our icons already here. So papyrus dark and click apply. There you go. Let's close out from here. And let's open up system settings and then open box configuration manager. And let's scroll up here. We have also here arc dark installed. So we can click this and now we have a more coherent look and we can close the window. Now let's install also a compositor while we are at it. Let's clean up the terminal and type in sudo pacman dash s and then pycom and hit enter. Proceed with the installation. 
there you go. Now we have to put PyCom also in auto start. So let's type in vim.config slash open box slash auto start and enter insert mode here. And the comment is going to be compositor. And the command is pycom f for fade. This should actually provide some fading effect. And now we can save the file and exit vim. And in your case, it should actually work when you restart the system. But in my case, I need to still change something because I'm on a VM. So let me type in sudo vim slash etsy slash xdg slash pycom.conf and hit enter. And I need to look for the vsync option, which is not supported on a VM, which is right there. So I'll just put a comment there to disable it and then save the file and exit vim. Now we can exit one more time, open box. You see also the menu now is arc GTK and click exit, type in start X. And our compositor now should be working. And we can confirm this by clicking on this icon, which is going to open up the settings for our Tin Tool panel. And we can close this up actually for now. And you can see the transparency is working here. So let's select actually this panel. I like this very much and click make default and click yes. And now we have a transparent panel here. If you don't like this, you can choose, for example, other ones. For example, this one is also cool. Now we can click make default and click yes. And we can customize this by going to edit theme. And say, for example, we want to have the gradient here instead of vertical, let's do it horizontal. And the second color, it's going to be, let's say, for example, something like this and click OK and click Apply. And this is how it looks like. It's not the most elegant, but it's easy to change this. There are other options here to configure. For example, if you want to have some panels items, you can put them in here or remove them from there. We'll explore this a little later in future tutorials. So let's click here OK and close this window. Now let's open up another terminal again and XFC. Let me actually bump up the fonts here so it's easier to see because we are going to look at the RC XML file, which contains the key bindings. So let's type in vim.config slash openbox slash rc.xml and hit enter. So we are going to look at this a little bit more in detail in the next videos. But for now, let me search for the keyboard section. So I'll type in slash and search for keyboard. And there you go. So here you can see the hard-coded key bindings in Openbox. For example, we have some key bindings here for desktop switching. C, A, left. C is for control. A is for alt. And then left is a left arrow. C, A, right, and so on. You can explore here the various key bindings. Let me scroll down to the next section. We have also key bindings for Windows switching. For example, Alt-Tab. This is a typical Windows switcher shortcut. We have also Alt-S tab for the previous window. And let's go down here to key bindings for window switching with the arrow key. That's also possible with the Windows key and the shift key. We have also key bindings for running applications. And this is just a peek we are going to do here to see how this works. So basically what we need here is to actually configure the key binding, which is in this case, Windows key and E. The name is execute. And the name of the application is Conqueror, which is not installed in the system right now. And the command is this one. So what we will do here is to copy, for example, this snippet and paste it in and create other key bindings. But we'll do this in another video. For now, I'm going to change this and let this keyboard key binding, but change the program. I'm going to replace Conqueror, which is not anyway installed, with XFC4 terminal. And the command is going to be the same. So let's replace this with XFC4 terminal. And then hit save and quit. And I'll close up the window and go to open box, reconfigure, and now hit Windows E. And we have our terminal there. So this should be enough to get you started in open box. In the future videos, we'll go more in depth in the key bindings file and also into the customization. So this is the basic installation of Openbox on Arch Linux. It should be enough to get you started, but in future videos, we're going to dig deeper into the key bindings and also into the customization. I hope you liked the video, guys. If you did, please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal through our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.